Welcome to PowerCode Music. In this presentation, we're going to talk about the Zoom R20 16 track digital recorder, and we're going to do a quick review of that unit. Released in late 2021, at the time of this presentation, the Zoom R20 is the brand's newest and what Zoom says is their most advanced digital multi track recorder ever, and that is no joke. In a previous video called Zoom R8, R16, and R24, Differences Explained, I did a comparison of the current Zoom R series models, and the Zoom R20 was not included in that list. Now this was because it had just been released and I wanted to take some extra time to analyze the unit separately. Now check out that video for detailed information on the other Zoom R series line of products. In this presentation, we'll do an overview of the Zoom R20 to see how it works and what makes it stand out from the rest of the R series line of products. So we're going to cover the unit's features and functionality, technical specifications, as well as the unit's brand new LCD touchscreen interface. Let's start with the Zoom R20's features. This is a 16 track digital multi track recorder, editor, and mixing workstation. It also has an LCD touchscreen, and none of the other Zoom R series models have that. It also has gain controls on each channel, and the faders are color coded. So if you look at the LCD display, the channels on the LCD display, those colors are the same as the trim knobs and the faders. The unit has eight XLR channels and two channels include line inputs. The unit's channel one offers high Z and channels five to eight offer 48V phantom power. A built-in drum machine includes 150 rhythm and song formations in 30 genres. And the unit features 18 onboard synthesizer sounds. So you can plug a USB MIDI keyboard into this device and be able to trigger synth sounds that way. You can also import MIDI files to add pre-recorded bass lines, effects, and other audio parts to tracks. So it makes it compatible with other hardware uh, digital recorders as well that let you export tracks. EQ and compression are standard on the R20 and the unit records directly to SDHC and SDXC cards with up to one terabyte of storage. Again, no other unit in the R series um, can record up to this amount of storage. One terabyte is the highest and the R20 has it. The unit also has an AC power adapter that's included and a BTA-1 is sold separately. Now this is a Bluetooth adapter that allows the R20 to be controlled via the Zoom wireless control app on an iOS device. Let's move on to the Zoom R20's functionality by analyzing the unit's top, side, and rear panel components. And we'll start with the channel bus. First, we have the input jacks. Inputs one and two, you would use that to connect things like guitars, microphones, and keyboards. These support XLR and quarter inch unbalanced plugs. Now inputs three through eight, you would use these to connect keyboards and microphones. These support XLR plugs as well. After that, we have our high Z switch. That switch you would turn on and off for input one. You would switch it as needed when connecting a guitar or bass. After that, we have our input peak indicators and the gain knobs. Use the input gain knobs to, of, of course, adjust the input signals and adjust them so that the peak indicators, of course, don't light. After that, we have our track indicators. These show whether the track inputs and the faders are connected to the tracks and that is tracks 1 through 8 or 9 through 16. What follows then are the track record buttons. You would press these buttons to enable recording on the tracks and they're going to light red when they're enabled. After that we have of course our channel faders. You would use these to make adjustments to the individual tracks and then we have 
our master fader. Now you would use this to adjust the signal levels of the master track, which can be a stereo mix of individual tracks. Other front panel components include the phantom switches. Now these turn the plus 48V phantom power on and off. You use these uh, when connecting condenser microphones that support phantom power to inputs five through eight. Next, we have our touchscreen. This shows various types of information and is operated by touch. Haha. <laughs> After that, we have the click button. Now this turns the metronome on and off and the indicator lights when it's on. After that, we have our rewind button. Press this to skip back one bar. Now if you press it and hold it, you can search backwards. After that, we have our fast forward button. You press this button to skip forward one bar, press and hold this button to search forward. After that, we have our stop button. Of course, you're gonna press this to stop uh, playback and recording. And if you press it when it's stopped, you will move the recording and playback position to the beginning of the project. After that, we have our play button. Of course, you're gonna press that to start the uh, playback of your project and also to pause the playback and the indicator will light during playback. After that, we have our record button. You press this to start recording, and of course, the indicator will light during recording to let you know that you're recording. Let's move on to the side panel components. They include a remote input jack. Here, you would connect a Zoom BTA-1 or other dedicated wireless adapter. After that, we have our USB Type-C port. Using this, projects can be copied to and imported from USB flash drives. USB MIDI keyboards can also be connected and used to play the onboard synth sounds. Connecting to a computer also makes the following possible. You can use the R20 as an audio interface. You can use the R20 with a digital audio workstation or DAW. You can use the R20 as a card reader. After that, we have the SD card slot. You would insert your SD cards and in this slot um, and they would need to meet the SDHC or SDXC specifications. Let's move on to the rear panel components. Now they include, number one, the power switch. Of course, this turns the R20 on and off. Now, when it's switched to off, the current mixer settings are saved in the R20, and this is saved in the settings file in the projects folder on the SD card. After that, we have our DC 12 volt AC adapter connector. After that, we have our phone's output volume knob, which adjusts the headphone volume. What follows is our phone's output jack. Now here you can connect your headphones. Last but not least are your output jacks. Now you would connect these to a PA system, power amplifier, power monitor speakers, or whatever you need to connect them to. Now we'll dive into the details of the R20's technical specifications. First we have the inputs and we look at the mic line inputs, connectors, and also the XLR TRS combo jack setup and the details for those specs. So under the connectors, we have everything. The input gain, input impedance, uh, maximum input level, phantom power, you name it. So all of the details, if you have any questions about it, pause this video, check them out. We have the same for the outputs, the technical specifications for the master outputs and the connectors, maximum output level, output impedance, we have the same for the phones, which would fall under outputs, the connector, maximum output level and output impedance. Moving on, we have the track settings, which include pan, EQ, send effects, stereo link, comp limiter gate, compressor limiter gate. Moving on to the recorder technical specifications. The, of course, maximum simultaneous recording tracks are eight, Playback tracks are 16. We have the recording format for you in detail along with the recording media. Moving on, we have the effects specifications, 
the number of simultaneous effects and the patch memories for them. We also have the tuner specs for you, along with the metronome, time signatures, tempo range, and then moving to the rhythm loops, we have a sound source format of pulse code modulation and the number of loops there are 150. Of course, this is for your drum machine. Next, we have the synth specifications on board. This is an eight voice uh, polyphony synth. Sound source format is frequency modulation. And of course, we have the number of sound types, which is 18 plus the PCM drum kit. Moving on, we have the display screen, your full specs for that. And next is what many of you will be interested into is your USB connection uh, types, which is a type C USB connection. Now this is going to cover your audio interface operation, your mass storage operation, the guitar lab software application connection, how that's going to work your USB MIDI keyboard connection, should you connect the USB MIDI keyboard to it, and of course your DAW connection because this device can be used as a control surface. So here's the functionality for that as well. Last but not least, we have your miscellaneous section, which is your remote power considerations and the weight of the unit. This is a mobile unit at two pounds, 14.9 ounces. Finally, we'll do a high-level overview of the R20's LCD touchscreen interface. Here, we'll take a look at some of the LCD touchscreen's operations on various screens so that you can get an idea of how the unit's display works. So you would use the touchscreen to tap, swipe, slide, and pinch in and out. The following are some applied examples. We'll start with the project screen. Here you would tap a value that you want to set. The current setting value is then shown in blue. You would touch the slider and then drag it horizontally to adjust a setting value. Double tap the slider to reset it to its initial value. Tap the plus or minus buttons at the ends of the slider to change the value by one. Let's jump over to the date time screen. On this screen, you would tap the up and down buttons to change the settings. Let's move to the rhythm loop screen. Here you would touch the display and slide your finger vertically to scroll. Let's move on to the track view screen. Here you would pinch in or out to zoom out or in on the timeline. In regards to navigation, to return to a previous screen or the home screen, at the top left of the screen, tap the left arrow button repeatedly until that specific screen opens. In summary, as you can see, the R20 is by far the most advanced model of the Zoom R series line of products. It covers all features and functionality of its siblings and then some. With superior preamps, a full touchscreen LCD display, and up to one terabyte of SD card storage, the R20 has indeed thrown down the gauntlet. Now remember, you can connect a USB keyboard to trigger the onboard synth sounds. You can use the onboard drum machine to invoke rhythm patterns. And you can operate the unit via the touchscreen for navigation, track editing, data entry, song mixing, and much more. Lastly, the other R series models, just like those, you can use this unit as either a standalone independent digital recorder or in conjunction with a digital audio workstation or DAW. Of all the models, in the R series at this time, the R20 is the one to beat. Well, that is a wrap. If you like this video, please give it the thumbs up and click the subscribe button on your screen now to join our group. We have new videos coming out every seven to 14 days. 
we would love to have you be a part of our team. Also leave a comment in the comment section at the end of the video and let us know what you think. And check us out on Facebook, Instagram, and Spotify. While you're here, please listen to some of the other music, watch some of the other videos, and let us know what you think about that too. Also check out the playlist because they're designed especially for you. I want to thank you so much for stopping by. We really appreciate it and we look forward to seeing you soon.